and welcome to Coffee With. I'm Christopher Evans. And today on Coffee With, we're pleased to welcome Ed Scott. Hello. Hi, Ed. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's nice to have you with us. So you're a professor of accounting and finance at Point Park University. And you're also the former head of the National Association of Black Accountants. Tell us a little bit about accounting and finance's role in your life and why it's important for young people to get into those disciplines. Well, my background in accounting has provided me with an opportunity to do a lot of different things. Um, I've been through different levels in organizations and different roles and responsibilities. And my last position was very nice in the purchasing department uh, for one of the railroads. Um, so accounting's just given me a lot of opportunity to leverage off that skill. For young people, it's about jobs, jobs, jobs. Um, the profession, in terms of hiring by CPA firms, has grown from in 2008, roughly about 25,000 to now about 40,000 every year. And so young people, knowing that there's this type of opportunity in the, in the profession, um, have a wonderful opportunity if they choose to pursue it. So it's important for young people to recognize those things, perhaps more than ever with the market the way that it is. What do you think you can attribute your success to when you were a young student just learning the disciplines? People wanting to help me, people taking an interest in my life. Um, I've been fortunate to have some very strong mentors from a very early age and they made me aware of the opportunities. Um, I used to, um, I wasn't the greatest student when I was in high school, so um, I used to work with a um, janitorial company and I remember riding down the street one day and the owner said, what do you want to do? And I said, you know, I'm thinking about it, I don't quite know. He said, well, can you count? I said, yeah, I can count. I said, can you count the three? He said, I count three. He said, well, you ought to consider accounting because he was a small uh, business owner and he was studying accounting uh, at the University of Pittsburgh. So it's just someone making you aware of what the opportunities are. So you spent some time in the rail industry. What lessons did you learn there and what have you seen, uh, you know, how have you been able to apply them into other industries? Well. Um, I didn't learn about how significant Pittsburgh is to the rail industry until I left for a while and joined uh, a railroad. And I would tell you that the lessons in terms of understanding how teamwork is important within the business across all different disciplines with respect to operations and understanding your role, because if you think about taking a uh, product from the port of the ports in, in, in California bringing them all the way across the country and ultimately landing in one of the big box retailers, mm -hmm. there's a lot of coordination that goes on. And so I learned how important this teamwork is and to understand your role. Um, and you, you've got to be flexible and you've got to be able to adapt because things are always changing. Uh, part of that time you spent in Kansas City. Yes. What are some similarities and differences from the business scene in Kansas City yeah. compared to Pittsburgh? I, I see right now a lot more good similarities than I do differences, particularly with respect to startup companies. Um, Kansas City has a recent initiative called Launch KC. Since they have um, Google's um, high, po high fiber optic network, um, a lot of um, tech firms, startup tech firms, are um, starting up in Kansas City to take advantage of that asset. Pittsburgh has already established a rich history in terms of supporting small businesses. We have a lot of R&D. Um, our universities are highly supportive of working with tech firms. So those are two strong similarities that I see that both cities are going to benefit as they go forward. What do you think is the most important piece of advice you could give to a startup entrepreneur, the, the first timer in business? Don't get in your own way. Um, a lot of um, small business owners, people who want to start up. They're the CEO, they're the chief marketing officer, they're the chief financial officer. As best you can, try to stay with what made you special in the beginning and what your expertise is. And to the extent you can, use the other experts to help you understand your budgeting, your accounting. And then the other thing I would say is understand that being profitable um, one month doesn't necessarily equate to having a lot of cash flow in that same month and, and you've got to be able to manage that gap between when money was earned and when it was actually received um, because during that time period bills have to be paid, taxes have to be paid, employees have to be paid and you have to be adequately capitalized. You've also been involved with uh, Pittsburgh's Urban Redevelopment Authority. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about your experiences there? Sure. Um, I, I had an opportunity to be an economic development officer, and that was quite a, quite a while ago. But one of the great things about that role was 
you have an opportunity to see people come in with their dreams. And to the extent you can look at their business plan and help them make sense out of it to see if it's going to work, and you can help make that dream come true, that's a wonderful position to be in. The flip side of it is sometimes you have to tell people you know, the hard news of this, this isn't going to work right now. There needs to be more work. But the URA played a, a, a great role in my development of a certain skill and it plays a great role in terms of just the growth of this city and job opportunities. At Point Park University, you're leading a particular initiative, the Urban Accounting Initiative. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that and kind of how it's helping students. Um, well, being a graduate of Point Park, it's great to come back to, um, to the school in this, in this role. Um, George and Kathy White gave the school a $1 million gift roughly two years ago, and unfortunately both have passed since then. But they created a role or, or provided that gift so that um, you could have an endowed professor, which I'm fortunate to have that role now. So 65% of my time is spent working full time as a professor, and the other 35% is outreach to women and minorities to make them aware of career opportunities in accounting and finance. Keeping young people in the city of Pittsburgh upon graduation mm -hmm. is a, a, always a challenge. Mm -hmm. Where do you see some opportunities for our city to retain some of the great talent that universities like Point Park are turning out? I think what's going on in downtown with the um, housing in terms of where businesses are moving out and we're thinking about creating um, condos and, and, and apartments for kids to come and live in the city and experience the vibrant downtown atmosphere that's being created, I think that is critical because People graduating, they're always going to compare our city to other cities, the Atlantas, the Dallases, and you're sitting there looking at it, you're like, I'm going to have more fun over here and I can make the same amount of money, you know, and so I think we have to continue to invest in those assets that are going to provide them with a, a, a great mix for them, both their business and their personal career. And it's, it's critical for us to realize that because Pittsburgh has, a, has an aging population and we've got to replace that with um, talent that's coming in from a, a lot of different sources. Absolutely. Well, Ed, it's been great having you on the show. Continued success to you and the great work you're doing for students here in the city. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Coffee With.